Hi everybody, it's week two with uh, proofreading and editing business 2190. I am Rhonda Johnson and I'm going to create this video using the PowerPoint for chapter two as a guide just because I don't want to forget to talk about something that we need to talk about. Um, and then we'll look at the angel calendar and the assignments that are coming up. I've got a few things you may want to know about that. So as we look at chapter two, one of the things that chapter two does is to identify some of the more common errors that we see in copy. And what it also does is emphasize some of the proofreading marks that are used when proofreaders or editors are marking up copy using pen and paper. Even though we don't use pen and paper traditionally anymore, there are a couple of professions that do, so we'll talk about it. But throughout the course, you'll see that most all of our work's going to be done using the computer, though I will try to work in at least one or two exercises throughout the semester that'll give you the chance to demonstrate the use of the actual proofreader marks with a pen and paper. So let's get started here. One of the more common things that we identify in copy would be spelling errors. And we love it that Word, Microsoft has got this wonderful spell checker and it's not just Microsoft, any of the other word processing programs have that as well. But the spell checker actually doesn't find all of the errors. As illustrated on this slide, we see that, for instance, two and two, they're spelled correctly. Spell checker's not going to identify them, but of course they mean two different things. So where the word two would be appropriate in a sentence, the word T-O-O -O would not. Also T-W-O would not for that matter. So spelling is something that goes beyond the actual spell checker. It's a great tool, but it doesn't do our job. Another very common type of error is a transposition error. Now, technically, it could be a spelling error as well, but transposition is where we've got two letters um, or two words that should be um, reversed because they've been put in the wrong error, in the wrong order. Now, I find that sometimes that happens to me when I type kind of fast and I'll just type the sentence and the words will be out of order a little bit and I'll have to do some pretty serious proofreading to catch those kind of errors. Um, if you look in the second bullet here, you'll see broad and bored. Pretty common for words that have the same letters in them to be uh, twisted around. So B-R-O-A-D, broad, B-O-A-R-D, bored. Easy mistake to make, but Clearly, these two words mean completely different things, and so where one would be appropriate, the other would definitely not be appropriate. I'm going to click on this slide real quickly just to show you that the introduction of this first proofreader mark is the transpose mark, which is meant to be able to show that either two letters in a sentence or two, two, letter, two words in a Oh, I am tongue twisted here. Two letters in a word or two words in a sentence could be reversed. And this is if you were going to make this correction with paper and pencil, this is how you would do it. You would show that the L should be before the E here, that the period should be before the quotation marks, and that the word is should be before the word do in this sentence. All right, let's move on to another common error, which is the added copy. It could be the added letter to a word or the duplication of a word in a sentence. I sometimes find myself writing the word the, T-H-E, twice. Let's go to the, the store. And I don't always find it. Words sometimes will point it out to me if I'm kind of watching for the little underlined squigglies. Word will point it out to me and say, hey, you've got two duplicated, two words here. It's a duplicate. You want me to erase one of them? And I love that feature in Word. It goes ahead and lets me, uh, alerts me so that I can get rid of one of them. Um, if we look down here in this bullet right here, the other type of that error is adding 
either a D for past tense or an S for plural to a word that's not being used in that way. So office and offices, they don't mean two completely different things, but offices clearly means more than one, and if you're only talking about one office, that would be incorrect. Here's a different kind of error, please and please. Both of these words sound the same when you pronounce them. Please, we all know the name, the meaning of that word. It's please pass the potatoes, um, please open the door. So it's the beginning of a request, whereas plea, similar, plea means kind of to beg. Or in a legal proceeding, we call it a plea, like a plea bargain, or someone's making a plea to um, request that a particular mm, agreement be accepted. And if we put an S on the end, then that means there's more than one. But they sound the same. Spell check's not going to find the error, so we have to really keep our eyes open. And then if we find one of those types of errors, we can use either the delete um, or omit copy. So here is a situation where they put two R's in the word your, and this is how you indicate with this symbol that one of the R's should go away. And then once one of the R's goes away, we then have to, um, if it was in the middle of the word like this one, three E's, we have to close the word back up. So we use the symbol and then we use the other symbol with it to show that we're going to um, reduce that space in the word. Incorrect letters, that's a pretty straight up misspelling to me. I think that what the book is trying to say is that they can't all be called misspellings, even though they technically are misspellings. They're emphasizing the idea that when you're using a keyboard, it's easy to accidentally hit the wrong key, even though you're not intentionally misspelling a word. It could be you know how to spell the word, you just click the wrong letter. Oh, I don't know about you, but my keyboard sometimes gets a little bit aggressive, and even though I feel like I'm hitting, uh, striking a, a letter on the keyboard once, it'll actually put two or three letters together, like three N's or something like that. And I'll have to actually look at it kind of carefully and go back and make corrections. But this is called a misstroke, and misstrokes, um, again, it's, it's an accidental clicking on a key that you didn't mean to. Um, and the example they're giving here, which would be a pretty serious error, the guarantee, the Q looks a little bit like a G, but it's not. So quarantine versus guarantee, two completely different words. So we just want to be careful of that. When we see a problem like that, this change letter, the slash, you simply slash through the incorrect letter um, and then replace it by handwriting the correct letter above. And then omitted copy. That's exactly the opposite of the added copy. In this case, we have forgotten to type a letter or we thought we typed it and it didn't actually show up on the screen. So this happens when a lot of times you forget to put the E on the end of a word or you're just typing really fast and you don't notice. But when you do do that, there's two different symbols that are used to identify. Whoops, I need to go a little bit further down here. Excuse me. One is the insert space. So look at the first example, mail to this address. Well, two and this should have a space between them so you can identify that needed space using that number symbol. And then the other one is a case where you forgot to put a letter in the word. And for instance, the word do is D-U-E. You would put this symbol. I call it a carrot, but I don't know. I, I just always have. Anyway, you put the E there to show that there's going to be added copy there. And you might use that same symbol if you needed to in, in insert a whole word that's missing. All right, we're almost finished here. I'm not going to go through this with you, but um, if you were in the display mode, slideshow mode in PowerPoint, you would see just these four, 
and then as you clicked each one it would identify for you the corrections so we're right here we see I look forward meeting to you and it should be a, that's a transposition error I look forward to meeting to meeting you we can accommodate four writers in a van that's a that's a straightforward misspelling there should only be um, two M's and not three and then oh for a mule of fire that's an old saying oh for a muse of fire so the wrong letter has been used and notice that in each one of these examples they're using the proofreader marks to show you how if you were doing it on a piece of paper those corrections would be made and then finally we, we have a, a space that's missing here okay so numerical errors I don't need to tell you how important those are in business you much of what we do is representing numbers to uh, clients to stockholders and when the numbers are wrong it really makes the company either look dishonest or incompetent and neither of those are good for business so numbers are really important proofreading to make sure that you don't have the numbers wrong is important in many ways the job that you do as an admin requires extreme attention to detail and your ability to do that that it does actually require a lot of patience and a lot of knowledge and both of those things put together um, will make you very good at what you do I tell almost all of my students more than once throughout a semester that it might well be and I think I might have told you this last week as well it might well be that you'll be the most literate person in your office if you're the administrative assistant and that makes you very valuable and very useful a lot of times you it's kind of ironic the people you work for who are supposedly smarter than you and clearly making more money honestly depend on you for the things that you're really good at and being very literate is one of the things you should be very good at so this is the last slide and it's kind of just summing up the entire chapter identifying that misspellings are are distracting to the reader they're embarrassing when they're caught learning to recognize them is critical so these are some points to follow develop a habit of checking have a dictionary and a thesaurus available to you it's available to you on computer um, you might also you know consider having a dictionary at your desk if you're using what word processing and I know you are then make sure you're using the spell checker but don't be a hundred percent dependent on it remember the spell checker is going to miss words and you're going to be required to fill in that gap and to find the errors you're going to need to um, just be very very patient as you read the document and be ready to find those errors so that wraps up the actual PowerPoint I'm going to um, slide out of the PowerPoint here and go into Angel with you for a moment because I want to look at the calendar with you and we'll, I'm going to go back here to the previous month um, notice here on Sunday that would be August 30th that you're going to be taking the chapter 1 test after reading chapter 1 and you're also going to be reviewing the new lesson for chapter 2 in addition to the video and the PowerPoint I just went over with you this chapter 2 um, lesson gives you some activities to do and introduces um, probably a lot of the same type of com concepts that I have done in the PowerPoint when you're finished with that and of course you have that entire week to do it next Sunday on September 6 you'll have the test for chapter 2 pretty straightforward you click it it'll take you into the test you have three other assignments now the only one that I'm going to really focus on here 
is this one and because I want you to understand what I'm looking for here always going to be encouraging you to right click and open things in a new window when you open this document you're going to save it in your computer with your name and the name of the assignment I want you to like you did in the pretest identify the errors in the document correct the errors, highlight them. Once you have it corrected, highlight it using the yellow highlighting tool, which is right here. So if writers was misspelled, you would, it's not by the way, but if writers were misspelled, you'd go ahead and correct it and then highlight it. Now obviously this is completely wrong, but I'm giving you an example of what you would be doing for me. Now understand how the points are derived here. There are 11 errors in this document. For each one of those errors that you identify, correct, and highlight, you'll get 9.09 .09 points. If by chance you do what I just did and you correct a word that's not incorrect and you highlight it, that would be a five point deduction in points. That's because that's an error. So you'll get nine points for finding errors that exist and correcting them. Five point deduction for correcting words which are not incorrect. I hope that makes sense for this document. Once you're finished with it, go ahead and save the document to your computer, again using the naming convention we talked about, return to the Dropbox, click Attachments, choose File, go find the document that you saved with the name of the document and your name in the file, upload it, finish, and then you should see the link to the uploaded document right down here. You can't see it because I'm not a student and I'm not going to upload the document. But if you can't see the link that you uploaded, I will not be able to see it either. So make sure you can see the link. When you're all finished, go ahead and click the word submit. Now if you forget submit, it's actually going to mean you didn't do your assignment. So I'm giving you all the steps so that we can be very careful to make sure you get all your points. All right, that kind of wraps up what I wanted to talk about this week. I appreciate your time, and I hope you have a great week with not just this class, but all your classes, and we'll have another talk next week.